We had called it we at one point. We called it. All the networks called it. You bet. So there you go. There's well, but the New York Post. For somebody who doesn't have the sound up, hey, folks, turn up the sound. Turn up your Bush sound. has not, at least not yet, won. He's clinging to a 224-volt lead in Florida, which he absolutely must have uh, to get the electoral votes. Whoever wins Florida wins the whole thing in the Electoral College. The national vote is now led by Gore. Dan Rather at CBS News Election Headquarters in New York. We're going to be right back, so stay here with us. A lot can happen. I love the holiday season because you're getting the house ready, you've got friends and family around. Where to, hon? Uh, we go to Walmart a lot. For turkey peas. I'm almost embarrassed to say probably two or three times a week. I like these. There's something for everybody there. Not only that, but the price is right. You can count on that. I like to go to Walmart. He does. Yes, he, he does. Really does. He's not kidding about that. Walmart has everything you need for the holiday season. I'm going to get this for you for Christmas. Look at that. A haircut kit, Haircut right? kit. That'll do me a whole lot of good. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, a brilliant move. Galway scampering across the goal to stop it. They just couldn't seem to get enough players forward before. He's showing good fluid movement. The right, the left. This is another aggressive charge down the <laughs> fight. He's timed his run to absolute perfection. Meet amazing, courageous kids on the next mark. Not over, CBS News election headline of the hour. If you're just getting up, you couldn't have dreamed anything to equal what has actually happened. Bush was declared the winner in Florida and thus the winner of the presidency. Gore called him to concede. Fast forward a few minutes. Bush's Florida lead began to evaporate. So does Bush's victory in the Electoral College, the assurance of it. And so does Gore's concession. He calls the governor back, says, I'm pulling back uh, my congratulatory call to you. And that's where we stand. That's why Bush is back below the 270 electoral votes needed to win at this hour. This is how the electoral vote stands right now. 249, we believe, confirmed for Gore. 246, that's without Florida, confirmed for Bush. Bush, at last look, had a lead of about 200 votes in Florida. The person who takes Florida, the man who takes Florida, gets it all. Now, in Florida, 6 million votes, roughly cast, the Bush's lead down to uh, about uh, 200, just over 200. Now, in the popular vote, Gore now has a lead over Bush. You may recall that in the last days of the campaign, there were some Republicans publicly quoted as saying, listen, if, if Bush wins the national overall vote and doesn't win the Electoral College, we'll take it to the Supreme Court, which has a Republican majority, of course. Well, uh, I don't know where they are now, but they might want to rethink it because the Gore people haven't said so, but they might very well say, well, we want to take it to the Supreme Court. Don't think they will. The Electoral College is going to decide. It doesn't get any stranger. Halloween has oh, come yes, a little late. What, well, Bob Schieffer says, oh, yes, oh, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Something late coming wait, in here? Wait till you hear this. Uh, we are now pulling back the Senate race call in Michigan State. That was the one where we, Washington State, what did I say, where, Debbie, uh, where we said that the woman, Maria Cantwell, had beaten the incumbent Republican senator, senator out there, Slate Gordon. We're now saying that uh, we don't know who won. Well, let's get this straight. Uh, the Republicans were virtually assured of having control of the Senate because the best the Democrats could hope for with what they thought was this victory in Washington State now, we're not so sure of, would have been 50-50. Now, uh, the incumbent Republican senator is not necessarily beaten in Washington. We're moving that to a we-don't-know call rather than a definitely the Democrat has won. Uh, folks are saying, well, what about all these, this exit polling and the calls? Look, in the last 40-some-odd uh, years, I believe this is true, that CBS News uh, has, uh, through its election unit, has called uh, many, many thousands of races. I can't remember the number, but at a minimum, we've called probably eight or 9,000 races overall. Statistically, our average is, uh, our batting average, our accuracy is the highest in the business by far. Statistically, very, very low. But here is an election night in which things have been so breathtakingly close that yes, we have been, uh, we've wobbled some in Florida, first called it for Gore, pulled it back. Then called it for Bush, had to pull it back. Embarrassing situation? You bet. But we're dealing as straight up with you as we know how. And in this Washington Senate race, 
we believed, as did almost everybody else, I think, I don't know anybody else hung out there with it, that there was enough evidence that the Democrats had unseated a Republican in Washington state, but turns out now uh, the whole thing is narrowed down when you get the actual votes counted. So in the Washington Senate race, not in the presidential race, we believe Al Gore has taken Washington's 11 electoral votes. The state's open now in the presidential race. Let's get back to that. Florida, 25 electoral votes, undecided. Bush, at last look, had a lead of something just over 200 votes, about 1 30th of 1% lead for Bush in Florida. Wisconsin, 11 electoral votes. Uh, at last look, Gore led slightly in Wisconsin. In Oregon, with seven electoral uh, college votes, at last look, Bush uh, led uh, somewhat in Oregon, with Ralph Nader a factor in both of those states, as he was in Iowa. In disputed election between Hayes and Tilton in 1876, by the way, no winner was declared for 16 weeks. I'm not suggesting that will happen here, but it gives you uh, some idea of how things went in back in the 1800s. Electors in three states were in dispute, including Florida. That was back in 1876. Ed Bradley. You know, th these things can take a long time. We've been looking at all of the states to see what the history is when it comes to recounts. So far, we've found that uh, in one state, Nevada, and I'm sure there are others out there, we just have to have some time to get to them. In Nevada, there have been five recounts in statewide races, none of which overturned the initial result. The last one was in a 1998 Senate race, and get a load of this, it took five weeks to resolve it. So I don't think that this, this may not be over by tomorrow no, or later tonight. The outlook on things are, uh, this is where this stands on the recount situation in Florida. The Gore campaign has said, uh, we think it's our responsibility to ask for a recount down there, and we're going to ask for one. Uh, there's some uh, question about it, but there's a belief that under Florida law, that any race is decided by l less than one half of one percent has to have a recount having said that bush's lead is now about one thirtieth of one percent out of six million votes cast there's supposed to be a meeting at nine o'clock that'd be about four hours from now uh, eastern time in florida in which the secretary of state uh... the governor and uh... the officials there will decide whether to go through a so-called, quote, full recount. Doesn't necessarily mean every vote is going to be recounted, but uh, in somewhat uh, uh, skeptical circumstances in your precinct, there'd be a recount. If they decide at that, uh, what we believe would be 9 o'clock meeting Eastern time uh, this morning, then a recount could certainly take as many as 12 hours. And under that scenario, we might not know until 9 o'clock tomorrow night uh, who's going to be the next president, Ed Bradley. But if the margin is then, as it is now, just a few hundred votes, you still have those overseas absentee ballots, up, up to as many as 30,000 were requested, that would have to be counted. And if the information we have is correct, that these ballots have, you have 10 days to get these ballots in. They just had to be postmarked yesterday. You could be counting these votes in Florida the absentees in for the next 10 days. Yes. So that would mean we would not know who the president of the United yeah. States is for the next 10 days. That's a possibility. Have to put that in the, yes, possibility category, not a probability, at least not yet. Bob Schieffer. Oh Well, that's very much the situation out there in Washington State uh, in the Senate race. It, it, they've now decided that it's going to depend on the absentee ballots, and they, they haven't gotten those counted. So that's why uh, we don't know who won that Senate race. Just to recap on that Senate, Dan, while we're on that. Uh, Republicans have now captured 50 seats in the Senate. Democrats have captured 58. We still have two, 48. Uh, we still have two to be decided. Leslie Stone. The country is split right down the middle. We're seeing it in this race in state after state. So many were razor thin, not like Florida, but so many were so close. This country is just divided. I saw it in the House races. Uh, it's just amazing. And I want to point one more thing out to you. You know, we've shown you that the New York Post had gone with this sort of blaring headline that Bush had won. But and they the may New yet York, be right. They may be right. But the New York Times, the gray lady, was so cautious. And they say that Bush and Gore, an extremely tight race, they close race, they got it right. Well, they got it right for right now. For right now. Keep coming back to this fact, and it's, uh, this is important. Bush has had a lead in Florida, and while his lead is now down to just over 200 votes in Florida out of 6 million cast, uh, he still has a lead. And if Bush wins Florida after all is said and done, recount, recertification, all of that, then Bush will be the next president of the United States. 
But right now, Bush trails in the overall national vote. It's 48% to 48%, but Gore leads by, uh, last count, it was something along the order of 70,000 votes. Uh, now it's down a little bit from that, but Gore has a clear lead in the national popular vote at this moment. This, for, for all anybody knows, could change once again. I want to put this in perspective because we're aware that a lot of people are just getting up or maybe uh, came in and, and thought that Bush had won or perhaps early in the evening some of them may have thought that Gore had won. That a call was made on the basis of exit polling, the best available information, that George Bush would be the next president of the United States. They started a big party down in Austin. But then the Bush's what seemed to be uh, insurmountable lead began to evaporate in Florida, got down so low uh, that Gore withdrew his congratulatory message to Bush, decided to take it to the House, try to get a recount in Florida. That's where we stand at the moment. 249 for Gore, 246 with Bush. It'll, it all depends on how Florida goes. It almost certainly is going to take considerable more hours to know how Florida goes. And depending on the absentee ballots coming in for overseas, it could take uh, days. No one is prepared to talk about weeks, which would be an outside possibility, but uh, frankly doesn't look like a probability. Now, uh, Bob Schieffer pointed out that in the state of Washington, a call's been pulled back uh, on that Senate race, which we believed had gone to the Democrat. Again, that may not be decided until all the absentee ballots are counted. And while Washington state is not believed to have nearly as many overseas absentee ballots as Florida, because Florida has so many more uh, military people who live in the state, mm -hmm. there would be quite a few. But listen to this, uh, they count any ballot that is postmarked November 7th, so it may take a week or 10 days before they get the votes counted out there. That's in the Senate race. In the Senate In the presidential race, race uh, we put uh, Washington's 11 electoral votes uh, in the Gore column. Our CBS News coverage will continue. Gore 249, Bush 246, 270 needed to win. We'll be back in just a few minutes. This isn't one of those coffees you sit and sip as the world passes you by. Introducing new Folgers Cafe Latte. Delicious coffee house style taste sensations. They're richer, coffeeer, and frothier than the other guy. So it's not the coffee you drink to take a break from your day. It's the coffee you drink to break into it. New Folgers Cafe Latte. For sinus sufferers, it can start with a twinge or perhaps a slight pressure. For everyone, there's a signal. Your sinuses are gonna be trouble. Don't let it happen. Take Sudafed at the first sign. Untreated sinus pressure can escalate to pain. But now, taking Sudafed at the first sign releases pressure, so symptoms don't get worse. The first sign of pressure, that's my signal. Stop sinus pain before it starts. Take non-drowsy Sudafed at the first sign. Great place. I like your neighborhood. Thanks. Oh, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Time to buy a galant. Zero down, zero interest, and zero payments for an entire year on our best-selling Mitsubishis. Hurry, this deal ends soon. Did you want to be alone? Um, no. No? <laughs> Not at all. Okay. The irony is I started doing this to be part of the crowd. Yeah, now. me too. <laughs> oh, do you... No, no, I, I just quit. Nicoderm CQ. Aren't the cravings unbearable? Well, I'm not jumping, if that's what you're thinking. No. <laughs> CQ is good on the cravings. It's strong medicine. It's with you 24 hours. It works. Nicoderm CQ. Quit now for the Great American Smokeout, November 16th. Quit, huh? Hey, join the crowd. Someone thought they had committed the perfect crime. We do this right, it'll open like a jar of pickles. All that was left was a skeleton. I hear it's just bones. What a rush. But after all these years... I need you to make me a face. CSI is going to give the victim justice. Who are you? An all-new CSI, CBS Friday. Unprecedented, history-making presidential race. It still hangs in the balance. We don't know who the next president's going to be. 
We believe that Al Gore has a firm 249 electoral votes and that George Bush, without Florida now, uh, who knows how Florida is going to go, has 246. It takes 270 to win. Florida has been moved for the second time tonight back into the we don't know category. Early it was called for, for Gore, pulled back, then called for Bush, now pulled back. Nobody knows how it's going to go. Recount highly probable. Now, for those of you who may have gone to bed and uh, thought Florida had been called for Bush and therefore Bush had won the presidency, we want to bring you up to date. Uh, Gore called Bush, then he retracted his uh, congratulatory telephone call, and then Bill Daly, who's chairman of the Gore campaign, came out to make this statement about an hour ago. I have some news to share with all of you tonight. Well, let me say, uh, I've been in politics a very long time, but I don't think there's ever been a night like this one. Just an hour or so ago, the TV networks called this race for Governor Bush. It now appears, it now appears that their call was premature. Let me be very clear about this. According to the information supplied by the Secretary of State of Florida, with 99.9% .9 of the vote counted, there is a margin of only about 1,200 votes out of millions cast with over 5,000 votes left to be counted. This is a very significant for most important reason, and that is for under Florida state law, this triggers an automatic recount and as everyone knows in America, this race has come down to the state of Florida. Without being certain of the results in Florida, we sim simply cannot be certain of the results of this national election. Let me add that Vice President Gore and Senator Lieberman are fully prepared to concede and to support Governor Bush if and when he is officially elected president. But this race is simply too close to call. And until the results, the recount is concluded and the results of Florida, Florida become official, our campaign continues. So let me... So let me... Vice President Al Gore and Senator Joe Lieberman for waiting out here so late tonight, and we hope to have you back very soon. Thank you very much. Good night. Now, about an hour ago, that's what Gore's man Daly said. He mentioned that he thought the difference was Bush was leading by about 1,200 votes. The Bush lead at last report was down to just over 200 votes. Shortly after uh, Bill Daly came out, down in Austin, Don Evans, the Bush campaign chairman, came out and made this statement. Governor Bush and Secretary Cheney asked me to thank you for all your terrific support and hard work. We hope and believe we have elected the next president of the United States. The latest count Lay's vote count in the state of Florida shows Governor Bush winning that state by more than 1,200 votes. They're still counting, they're still counting, and I'm confident when it's all said and done, we will prevail. Thank you again for all your hard work and all your efforts, and we look forward to a great celebration. God bless. Now, after he made that statement, Bush's lead in Florida dropped on down to just over 200 votes, with still some votes to be counted. How many? We don't know. As of now, Gore trails by about 900 votes in Florida. This is new information just in. Gore trails by about 900 votes in Florida. That still would be uh, something on the order of one-third of one percent of the total vote of six million votes cast in Florida. Bush still leads in Florida, but it's close enough 
where there's very likely going to be a recount, and that will take uh, hours, uh, if not days, to finally get that squared away. Byron Pitts is on the phone about the Florida vote. Byron, what have you found out? Well, Dan, two bits of new information. A short time ago, the uh, Florida State Attorney General, Bob Butterworth, announced that there will be a recount in Florida later today. He said it was his hope that the election workers may be allowed to go home, get a few hours sleep. He said, quote, that no one here is quite sharp right now. They'll be allowed to go home and rest, and then they'll return, and the recount will begin. Secondly, uh, we're hearing from the Gore camp campaign, and they're getting complaints, they allege, from some of their supporters in places like Duval County in North Florida and Dade County in South Florida, that there were some discrepancies with the ballot, that many of their supporters say that when they went to vote, the way the ballot was configured, configured that they uh, unintentionally voted for uh, Pat Buchanan when they meant to vote for Al Gore. That's one of the issues that the Gore people are raising as to why there should be a recount, that, that, there, may be something, that there may be something wrong with the numbers in Duval, Duval County and Day County. But again, uh, Bob Butterworth, the Attorney General, said the recount will occur at some point later today in Florida once the workers get a few hours sleep. Dan? Byron Pitts in Florida, that gives us a headline for this hour. Attorney General in Florida says there will be a recount, which means we won't know who the next president of the United States is going to be for quite a while yet. Uh, 249 for uh, uh, Gore, 246 for Bush, with 270 needed to win. In the national overall count, uh, Gore has a slight lead over Bush now in the popular vote. Dan Rather, CBS News. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Open your eyes to a world unlike anything you've seen before. From director Ron Howard, Dr. Seuss's classic tale comes to life. Jim Carrey is The Grinch. Rated PG. At theaters Friday, November 17th. To get the most tender, juicy turkey. How come you never look at me like this? All it takes is a little patience. Okay, I think it's time. And a butterball. Some turkey! <laughs> the best of all is butterball. 21, 22, 23, 24. 365. 24. 7. 365. Chevrolet. Supporting U.S. Olympians 24-7, 365. I've taken care of this garden from the very first seedling. We need each other. But when I got arthritis, I thought my gardening days were over. Then my doctor encouraged me to keep at it, because staying active helps keep joints from getting stiff. And to make it easier, he recommends Advil. It's the number one recommended medicine of its kind for arthritis pain, and it's gentle on my stomach. My doctor's right. Advil and gardening work beautifully. Advil, stronger than pain. My brother's son said he had an idea that would make us rich. That funny-looking kid said that. Said we can use the Internet. The Internet? We ain't selling books. We're selling feed. And we already sell every ranch in the county. Harlan, have you ever been outside the county? Well? Give me a minute. I'm thinking. Can Jim's beloved station wagon Pretty cherry, huh? survive the Big Apple? The car is the hellish I saw. I was going to say hard to parallel park. All new Welcome to New York tonight. A wrongful conviction made him a fugitive. Helen! His search for the real killer made him a hunter. Friday, Dr. Richard Kimball put the gun down. Will become a hostage. Go! Go! This never should have happened. Problem is, it did. You won't believe what happens next. The Fugitive, all new CBS Friday. Headline of the hour, Florida Attorney General says there will be a recount in Florida. Bush clinging to a lead of uh, some 200 plus votes in Florida, we believe, possibly a few more than that. We're facing the real possibility, it's not yet a certainty, but the real possibility that the man who wins the overall popular vote could lose the Electoral College vote. 
right now in the nationwide overall popular vote, looking over here, trying to get it up on your screen, Al Gore leads by 263,000 votes nationwide. Not all the votes have been counted. If this trend it set in about an hour and a half ago could continue, Gore would win the popular vote. But in the electoral vote, in the electoral vote with 270 needed to win, and the electoral vote is decisive, Gore, on a state-by-state -state basis, we think is, has a confirmed 249. Bush has a confirmed 246 with 270 needed to win. It all gets down to Florida, and in Florida, Bush has a paper-thin lead in the fight for the 25 electoral votes. There will be a recount, says the state attorney general, and there are absentee ballots to come in, and as close as it is, they may have to wait for those absentee ballots before anybody can be certified as a winner in Florida. Wisconsin and Oregon, Wisconsin with 11, Oregon with 7 electoral votes, uh, they remain undecided, but right now, Florida, and this will remain, the man who wins Florida, make no mistake about it, will be the next president of the United States, even if it turns out to be George Bush, and even if George Bush does not win the overall national popular vote. Hillary Clinton has won a New York Senate seat. Chuck Robb, a veteran Democratic senator in Virginia, has lost his. 249 to 246, Gore leads in the Electoral College vote with 270 needed to win. Dan Rather, we'll be back. Well, a lot of possibilities are opening up here, uh, none of them uh, leading to any fast knowledge of who's going to be the next president of the United States. In this unprecedented situation, the Florida Attorney General, has been reported by CBS's Byron Pitts, has said there will be a recount in Florida. That's bound to take hours, could take up to 12 or 13 hours, and that's a recount of the votes already counted. There are absentee ballots coming in from overseas that won't be in for days. Some of them may not be in for weeks. Now. Since the issue of recount has been opened, and since Bush is now, in, although he leads in Florida, in some peril of perhaps losing Florida, who is to say that Bush won't ask for recounts in some other close states? Ed Bradley can fill us in on that. Well, Dan, it's possible that other recounts can be asked for in both Iowa and Wisconsin. Gore has been declared the winner in Iowa now, and he's leading by a bit in Wisconsin. If Bush loses Florida, he could ask for a recount in Iowa and in Wisconsin because the winning margin for Al Gore there is so low. But he would need to ask. But you can bet your bottom dollar, if he does lose Florida, he's certain to ask for recounts in those two states. True enough. Uh, our focus continues to be on Florida, and I keep saying to myself, so I'm going to say to you, we recognize that some people are just now getting up. And many of you may have gone to bed last night believing uh, that uh, George Bush had been uh, elected president of the United States, and you had reason to believe that, because uh, everybody that we know of uh, in the exit poll business had taken a look at the sample, made their judgments, had the data put into computers, and had moved Florida and its 25 electoral votes into the Bush column. But the actual votes counted began to narrow down. Bush's lead evaporated uh, to a very large extent, and so CBS, as well as some others, have now pulled Florida back into the we-don't-know category. Not our best night, not our best situation, but we do the best we can, and in an election this unprecedentedly close, I suppose it was uh, bound to happen. Now, in the Electoral College, and that's what's decisive, the Electoral College, Bob Schieffer, we have only a few seconds here, but all electors in all states are not bound to vote for the person that they've told people to I double check for. this just to make sure, but in 26 of the states, the electors are not bound by law, only by history and tradition. That's not to say they would vote the other way than the way they were instructed to vote, but they don't have to. Well, that just raises... thoroughly confused. Everybody. Well, it's thoroughly confusing, <laughs> but it's important information to know in a race this uh, close. What is hoped, of course, is that eventually uh, there'll be a, a, you know, a firm vote in Florida. The man who wins Florida will be uh, declared the winner uh, because he'll have the most electoral votes, and that will be that. 
but all kinds of possibilities are now opened up and some of them uh, not too good. Recount in Florida, going to take hours, maybe recounts in other states such as Iowa, which we believe has been carried uh, by Gore, but by a small margin, and in Wisconsin where it's still out there. And this whole business of the Electoral College, we could have a situation where Gore, who's now leading the overall national vote, loses in the Electoral College, uh, it, 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 according to the...